All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Wednesday Drawing Hangout. This is where we will be just working on some just fun little drawing exercises just to get us going for this uh, for about an hour, right? Um, but before we start, I just wanted just to share with you just um, a little thing that I had written. It's in this book that I had written, Conquering the Artist's Struggle, and it's on, uh, let me see what I have here. I just put, uh, here it is. Uh, this is a great little quote. Um, this is by one of my favorite authors by the name of Napoleon Hill. So I just wrote a, a, a quote for this and it's, it goes, a negative mental attitude can bring nothing but failure. All right, Napoleon Hill. I wanted to start this week off by creating great thoughts. This is key to the success of whatever it is you, uh, you desire to have happen in your life. Like Napoleon Hill said, having a negative mental attitude can bring nothing but failure, but you have no chance of success if you doubt your actions and your intentions. Your mind will stop you in your tracks every time. It's through, it's, it's tough to always have a positive outlook on every situation, but know this, if you don't, you will fail at what you do. The one and only limitation you have as an individual is the one you create in your own mind. You have the power. Follow your passion, be persistent, and live with enthusiasm. And again, it's just this, once again, it comes down into this mindset. It's even as we're drawing today. When you go into this, when you go into any drawing situation, yeah, you might have those doubts. Am I even capable of doing this yet? Am I, am I, can I, can I do this, right? And again, if you just keep telling yourself, this is impossible, uh, this sucks, this is horrible, it's not going the way I want it, it doesn't look like Steven's drawing, blah, 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 all these thoughts that go through your head, these are those limitations, which I just kind of want you to just be aware of that it's all trial and error. And I can tell you every time I even go into a drawing, still today, this very day after drawing all these years, there is still always a little bit of that struggle of just what, where is this gonna go? I have, I have belief in myself. I know that I'll eventually get there, but I know I'm gonna go through that struggle phase in the beginning and it's not always gonna turn out perfect. And it's very rare that my drawing turns out the way I want it the first round, but I'm very conscious of decisions that I'm making. So I just wanted to show you guys some things real quick before we get started here. Um, let me just share my screen. And just move this out of the way. Um, just some different things. This is from this new book that I'm doing on uh, through Kickstarter. But what I just kind of wanted to point out, number one, just a couple things is, you know, I just write even here, like draw what's underneath the clothes. That is so vital. And even what we do today, you don't want to, when you're drawing your character, don't just start automatically just putting clothes, you know, on the person. And, you know, you're going to maybe see me go about doing that. But I want you to be conscious that there's a leg maybe, you know, underneath there. There's a kneecap, you know, that's underneath that. And this sort of like guides us and starts to tell us how things are, are sitting and resting. That way I don't just draw an arm coming out from here. I'm thinking about, no, that arm might be coming out through here and that shirt is gonna be hanging down because gravity is gonna be pulling it down, right? And another thing, I'm always conscious about my negative space. This is so important just to think about that. Even that little negative space that's happening in between here makes a huge difference. Your eye works like a symphony when you just kind of bat, ro going through the design and it is poetic in a way where you're just looking at shapes and it's all moving around and the more conscious you are of that the better chance you have even here i just drew this line here just to show you i was conscious of that silhouette shape that i was creating all right so just things to really keep in mind uh when you're drawing let me just go through a couple of these other ones real quick um um, you know, here, find the shapes and add the feathers, right? This is just to the point of just, again, whenever you're drawing, you're drawing hair or anything else, I might find that shape, you know, whatever that shape may be first, instead of just doing something like this and trying to find my feather shape, 
I want to find that maybe that arc shape through there. And then here I can just start to come in and pull all these different varieties and these, these different shapes that I want. And then it maybe all just feels like it's coming from one place. The same thing when you're doing hair, I've found it just always extremely helpful just to find that shape of that hair. What's that hair shape? And then from here, maybe I might come in and just start to break up and feather my shapes. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a stylistic approach but it always is going to help you with your overall designs when you when you're working on them all right um another thing just to always keep in mind just this is where we are going to be today is just staying loose at first don't worry about getting just a perfect drawing thrown out for you it's it's not gonna it, it it doesn't matter you can always go back and fix your drawings you can always get to this eventually like a marker comp or something afterwards i can always come and just darken my lines afterwards once i've figured out my drawing underneath these go into that rough um sort of stage through there all right um so the more you just kind of just think about that that staying loose in this factor and just even with this drawing you can see again the drawing through look what i did with bob here you know you can see his leg um underneath that shape through there right and then his pants are coming off of his body and then it like sort of like rolls off there and then wraps around and then just comes through i just kind of want to get an understanding of where that leg may be or you can see this arm that's wrapping through there another just very important thing just drawing through i got that arm through there and that sleeve is hanging off there and then comes down and connects you know to here like hits that point through there so these are all the things that we just got to be really conscious of okay all right, let me uh, get out of that. Um, so today, we're not working on these characters. We're going to do something a little bit more imaginary. But what I wanted just you to look at, this is, of course, on sameenergy.com, uh, again, where you can just find out, just look at all these different costumes. But this is what it's... <laughs> that's funny what this guy's wearing right there. I just noticed that. Um, just, you know, when, when we're trying to draw, draw characters or do anything, these are the little things that you want to look for just to help you might go, oh, I wanted to draw a character and, uh, you know, I don't know how to draw costumes or design. But even with that, you might just find that, oh, you know what, that, that's actually a good idea. I, I like this sort of shirt on this character. I like that the sleeves are rolled up. That's interesting. I love the camouflage pants. You know, that's kind of cool. I'm going to incorporate that into my, you know, design. And you can mix and match and go through all of these. And this is more of just like a sort of like Tokyo fashion um but again it gives you inspiration and you get get this is where all the ideas come from oh i, I didn't think about maybe i should draw i'm going to design this character just wearing like um you know their vans or something and they got a little bit of rolled up pants and, and the ripped up jeans you know I, I wasn't thinking about that that's a cool idea i'm going to add some ripped up jeans to my character i'm going to end up put a bandana around a character and this is where costume design comes into play for you, especially if you're someone who uh, doesn't do costume design. I'm not a costume designer, but as a character designer, you kind of have to wear that hat of being that costume designer. You're creating all these incidental characters for shows all the time. Maybe you're doing your comic, maybe you're doing your, um, your children's book or, or just illustration book or whatever it may be. Again, you, you wanna find that reference. Look at these interesting hats. Look at the way the clothes are. So look, gathering your reference is vital in order to help you succeed in your, in what it is you do. But today, what we're going to do, we're going to mess, we're going to, you've got to use our imagination a bit. All right. So today, what we're going to be tapping into, we did this a long time ago, but I, it was always fun. So I want to do it again. This is with Earth's World on, um, you can see just the, uh, where, where is it? Just Earth World on um instagram all right so that's where you'll get the reference i just got to show you this this is just freaky as all hell but uh the, you know i i mean i'm not giving my daughter uh a doll that looks like that that's kind of scary um but you know interesting like really interesting like would you have even thought about doing something like that maybe you wanted to draw just this really creepy 
sort of character for something that you're envisioning and you go, I'm going to draw this doll and it's going to have like this blown out head and guts coming out of the head. Again, it's inspiration, right? That That's what this comes down to. But what we're going to do today, what I challenge you to do today is I want you to look at these faces. Again, you can draw cartoon caricature versions on them, but the idea is maybe just to Again, just think about your shapes, you know, here, if I'm just kind of going to draw this idea of this character, I just, again, I'm not worried necessarily about the exact caricature of her. I'm just, I'm just liking the reference, you know, from here. So maybe what I want to do now, I'm going to invent a body. I can kind of see she's wearing a, she's got a strap or something there for, a, for something. It looks like she's probably wearing a tank top, but from here, now I'm going to just try to think about just inventing a body. So I have my head, I got my torso, and then maybe I'm just, you know, get those legs. And here I'm just going to maybe think and maybe pull a little bit just right now. Again, you guys won't have this advantage, but I'm just pulling right now what we just saw on that um, one of those um, Japanese uh, costumes, you know, that we saw through there. You know, maybe that's ripped. Maybe she's wearing camouflage or something through there right so here i'm just getting this idea sometimes what i like to do too is just draw a prop or something in the hand maybe she's holding a coffee you know through there she could be holding a, a cup of coffee maybe here she's got her hand sort of like holding uh this you know case or you know this bag or by her side whatnot but here again i'm just staying extremely loose with this design um and then afterwards again after this session whatnot you guys want to create just more of a character to it do it but this helps you use photo reference and helps you use your imagination so that's what we're going to be working on today just trying to create just different body shapes off of these characters look at the attitude right try to capture that like a tilt in the head like with her i could have actually just put a little bit more of a tilt to that head and given that attitude, you know, just through there, you know, could have been just a little bit uh, funner with that design, right? So now I'm creating contrast in my design through there. Look at this guy over here, where we got this guy's head sort of like slouched down through here, right? And his body's sort of like leaning forward through there. So that might be an area that I want to go. I imagine, I just feel like this guy, based on, you know, how heavy, bit wide his shoulders are, how big his face is, it's probably got a heavier set body, you know, through there. So that's something, you know, again, I could maybe just create, give this guy some shorts or something that again, just make it up. Just, you know, what, what do you think? Again, think about your ground plane where your character is standing. But what we're trying to do really is put all these shapes and combine them uh, together. And eventually you'll, you'll figure out your, your design that you want to, you know, create with this character. But again, this is all just about, having fun and inventing and pushing yourself. Looks like he's got glasses hanging from his shirt. So you might want to add those through there. Again, just whatever your mind comes to, think about people you've seen. And this is why we got to observe so much all the time when we're drawing people, all right? So with that said, I'm just going to turn put on just a little bit of music and then we can uh, get rolling here. Of course, this is a Q&A session too. So if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and uh, feel free just to ask any questions that you like to. Yeah, hey, uh, Stephen, it's Luke. Hey, Luke. Hey, how you doing? Good. Excellent. Um, small request. Um, that same energy um selection you showed us with the Tokyo fashion. Yeah, I, I get the I get the thrust of today's lesson, but would you mind putting that in the chat? Yeah, let me grab this. Thanks. Let me grab that link. I'm just going to go to the chat room here and throw that in here. All right. Thanks. I was feeling those fashions. <laughs> yeah. All right. Nice. Yeah. Just have fun with it again. Just try to block in the shapes first. You can always come back and create the character that you want to create and have fun, you know, just kind of maybe putting them together just a little bit more, you yes. know, you change some things. Yeah. I saw somebody in the Tokyo fashions that I was drawing. He was wearing black and he was like hunched over. I really wanted to finish that guy. Really okay, well, go ahead and just, I just put the link in there. So in the chat. So if you want, you want to just open it up yourself in your own window, go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, something that I just want to point out too, again, things to be careful at. 
like here, I'm just like, I've added, I'm like, you know, I, I don't know why, but I put gloves on this guy just for fun. But things that I want to avoid, I want to avoid that tangent in there, right? So I don't just want to put his shirt just lining up with that, right? That's where we got one shape blending into this other shape at the same point. And we don't want that. So what we want to do to avoid that tangent is I'm just going to maybe just raise that up just a, a little bit further. Right, and that, that, and then here I've just dropped this glove down just a little bit more, and that's how we can just start to avoid that tangent in the design. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me just get my music going. Hi, Stephen. Hey, Kinga. Kinga how's it going. Hi, I had a question for you and yeah. uh, for the, for everyone as well. So feel free to pitch in if anyone has an idea, because I was thinking. Um, do you have any good recommendations on note keeping, kind of organizing all, everything that you've written? Like, do you guys have any app yeah. recommendations or do you use like old fashioned like journals, bullet journals? Like what's your, like, I know you have like your, you said that you have like some focus on like distraction, um, you know, stuff with you. So I was wondering what's, what's your system, you yeah. know, like it's open for every, it's open to everyone. Cause okay. you know. All right. Yeah. I'll tell you, I mean, mine's very just uh, old fashioned. I just have it in a, just a journal. And to be honest with you, I am really bad at it. I just have it on just a bunch of loose pieces of paper. What I've done, um, you know, probably a few months ago, I just grabbed some folders, just some, you know, just regular paper folders with pockets in them and started just to put all my thoughts that are geared toward teaching in one folder, all my thoughts that are geared towards mindset stuff in another folder, trying to organize it that way. But yeah, I try not to use electronic devices personally. I write everything down on paper. But yeah, if anyone else has wants to unmute yourself and share any anything that works for them, please uh, open it up and uh, uh, share. With them. Great. Good morning. Uh, what I usually do is I'll just write um, my notes right next to drawings and things in my procreate. So I have like a whole I do illustration as well as notes next to them and usually uh, examples. And, um, you know, I had to sift through them often, but but I what I will do eventually is get them all and put them all into like a little make like a little book, like a little uh, file that's nothing but notes. So so that's what I usually use just procreate. But in general, uh, note taking is very important. I used to do it when I took physical classes all the time and I'd have pages and pages of these things. Um, you know, people don't take notes often now. Yeah. And I think it's a loss. When you say file, like you mean a physical like, file, like what Stephen says, or you have like no, a doc no, like on if your Procreate. If you, I use Procreate, so yeah. what I'll do is I'll have like a different, like I'll be doing, I, I, you know, there's one, like I open up one canvas, and within that canvas, you obviously have different layers. I'll just, there's the just, you know, I'll have several layers, and usually just make notes and drawings on the layers as well as draw as uh, as as well as just regular drawings and then later on you can just import them to a to a uh, a little to a, another canvas that's nothing but notes that's what i do oh yeah i mean i know i take notes while i draw and procreate too i just feel yeah. like i have notes all over everything post-it notes like yeah, all over yeah. my computer and then i'm thinking of like maybe should i digitize it just to or like see it because it I don't know, like it's piling up, but yeah, it's interesting here. You can like... always pull them into make a new, make a new canvas. It's only notes. And that's kind of like a little book is what, what I'm, th is my thinking on that. Yeah. Cause so. you're always you in check out, you, you may want to check out good notes. I use good notes because you can drag and drop from anything that's already electronic directly into good notes. You can write with a pen and it's actually, um, it has OCR so you can search it. You can oh. go back and search, you know, which is really critical when you have lots and lots of notes and you can make lots of little notebooks and you can put dividers in all electronic. And uh, I do a lot of physical notes, just like, you know, in a notebook and I just snap a picture and I can put them right into good notes and good notes is now like you can buy electronic planners that go right in there. Like if you want certain layouts and I make my own so that it's, the way I want it, but it's, there's just tons and tons of them out there, but you can, if you split your screen on your iPad, you can drag and drop right from procreate into good notes and 
and I just like it because it's searchable. Yeah, I mean, that sounds awesome. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. I want to use good notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can draw on one side and then take notes on the other. I mean, if you have the iPad big enough, I suppose. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That sounds interesting. No, oh, thanks, guys. I saw <clears throat> some people wrote in the chat. You know, I just, I when I sit or, you know, draw, animate, I just have a pad and I just scribble, but it's also messy than... I'm trying to kind of organize all this. Cause... Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention just all the files. Like I have so many files of all these things. Everything's so unorganized, you know, on, on my end. I always go, okay, today I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to organize it. But it's just like, oh, I get uh, overwhelmed, I think, with just the amount of files I have on my computer. Yeah. That's, Doubles yeah. of everything and triples. And it's crazy. I have this thing, I, I, um, my parents buy these cookies and they come in these old fashioned tins and I really like them. So I, I write the little ideas for stuff and I drop it in the tins and I call it idea brewery. But oh, then okay. It's this pile of, pile of papers in a tin. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever can kind of work, right? Yeah. Kinga, uh, this is Brandon. I... Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I think maybe when Julie said good notes might be my savior too, because I'm always <laughs> searching for my, where's my notes? I have like 50 million notebooks and then I have like notes on my phone, just like regular Google notes. And I'm, and then, yeah, it's just better to be organized with everything. It's, that might be my savior too. Um, yeah, it sounds good, especially like what you said, the OCR that you can search from a photo potentially or for your, from your handwriting. I think that's amazing. Hey, Kinga, this is McKay. Oh, hi. Uh, Everyone's okay. chipping in. I love it. I was, I was, I was checking if you could hear me or not. <laughs> so for me, it's just a combination of like jotting stuff down on my iPhone as soon as possible on the default notes app um, but then after that like I, I basically just compile everything on just uh regular like notebooks like analog notebooks kind of like Steven I'm a little old school in that regard but in any case um if you don't have the notebooks on you jotting them down quickly on the notes app you can't really like Go wrong with that especially if you have an ipad and an apple pencil because you could just literally write it down with your own handwriting and i just find i remember stuff a lot better when i write with my own hand that way yeah and it's more uh kind of clean because then you can erase and like rearrange right in, yeah yeah in those snow taps with the hands on the ipad yeah mm -hmm. i think yeah the ipad needs to be utilized more by me <laughs> Yeah, if you they want to be really fancy with your notebooks, you could add washi mm -hmm. tape as like little decorative borders and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, you know, scrapbooky in that regard. Yeah, stickers, make it really yeah. like or stickers, nice. Yeah, you can't beat notebooks in my opinion. Yeah, I hear that actually writing down with your own handwriting instead of typing, you are actually creating a neuro, a neuro a mimetic link that helps you memorize much easier than if you just type it um, hmm. that you know actually putting down the you know the words and you with your hand is supposed to create a, a a link and and you do and you're supposed to remember it much easier you know i, mean, I that would really make sense. believe that i i really believe that and i think maybe yeah. that's why i do it because i feel like when i do write things down i do take it in more and i do get a better idea and whenever i do workshops i never give out packages for people just like packets like here's all the information we're going to cover it's like because people just grab it look through it and they're not retaining it and if you sit there and write down your notes and jot it down you're much more likely just to really let it sink in a bit and maybe even be a little bit more inquisitive, you know, with mm. it. So, uh, but I, I really find that must, that's got to be true because I really believe that. It is super true. And it's um, also why I switched and I do half like traditional paper and half good notes 
because GoodNotes, you, you just write with the Apple Pen. They just look like ruled pages or you can have them blank or you can have a little dot matrix. So you're still doing the writing part, but it's capturing it so that I can see it. And, and I do make use of the Apple Notes too. I, I don't know who brought that up, but the Apple Notes are awesome if you have an iPhone and an iPad because you can kind of see it wherever, um, which is really handy. And, uh -huh. and then there's, you know, there's all kinds of kind of in-betweens you can do if you do a, I like the hybrid because then I get the best of both worlds, but um, definitely the, even when I do digital with good notes, I'm still writing. I'm never typing because I just don't remember it if I type it, but if I write it, then I, then I will. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you said, it's a different part of your brain, right? It, when it's digital. Yeah. And I get, yeah. Yeah, absolutely organization but it is important again it is a great topic it's just very important though just to stay organized and know what you, you know you're trying to accomplish and you guys have heard me talk about it a thousand times just how i just have a physical calendar in front of me i don't use my calendar on my phone or anything that way i just write it down and i know exactly what it is that i'm trying to want to accomplish that day and that just kind of keeps me just very uh grounded and just uh, is very helpful for me doing mm -hmm. that well thanks for chipping in everyone that was yeah. uh... always fun to talk no problem i think you you um raised a good um point uh kinga um hi luke <laughs> hey how you doing i know for me, like um since copy paper is so readily available um I, I tend to use that and then just like even with these classes that's what i'm using like right now and then cell phones you know their their photography is just so great now you know it makes it, it makes i i know what you said about the tins and like having collectible and you know tangible things that are fun to like just handle and you know write in um yeah but something that's probably going to be that you just need for reference again like like steven was saying about the note taking and, and a, lot, a lot of other students um, as long as you know you're capturing with your cell phone, then um, as, as long as it's captured, then you can discard the paper without feeling it's so precious that you have to hang on to it. And then you have the pile up. You know, I, I know the struggle. <laughs> if that makes any sense to you. <laughs> well, no, it does. I mean, I would show you, but I'm embarrassed. <laughs> oh, no, you don't have to be. <laughs> Piles. <laughs> and when you have the nice little book and it's, you know, nicely bound and everything, yeah, then that's part of, you know. I guess yeah. the value that you put on it, you know? Oh, I know. Yeah, that's true. And it's nice to kind of opening up like a little planner, especially if it's nice to the touch and everything. Yeah. Sure. It's a back and forth like McKay said. <laughs> Very back and forth in my case. All the different <laughs> tools, you know, all the different all the different elements you use. It's 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 never one thing, it's always a bunch of things. Yep, that's for sure. Joy's trying something new. See what works, you know, for you. See what techniques work for you, and that you know, it's all experimentation. Yeah. Sorry to chime back in a little late. I had to. I have a new puppy, and I had to take it outside. But I was listening the whole time, and um, I stole something that Stephen introduced. Gosh, I don't even know when. Um, but I have a a uh, glass marker, and every evening I write the two most important things that I have to get done the next day on the bathroom mirror. So that's like the first thing. And then I write something positive, like you're awesome. You know, like just that like nice wake up thing. So you look at that and then, you know, some days you're just like, Oh, I can't do this day. And then you walk in the mirror and it's like, you're awesome. <laughs> um, but then I always do like the two most important, if I make a whole list, I don't get to stuff. So I try to think the night before, like what has to happen tomorrow? for tomorrow to feel complete like what is the most important thing and then the second most important thing just in case circumstances prevent that most important thing you know like maybe you have to get the oil changed in your car but they cancel your appointment or something so i always write the top two and that was directly from steven's playbook because he said i think you said you do something similar right you write yeah you write something on the mirror and yeah and so um, yeah, so I just got one and it's kind of fun too. You know, you write on the mirror and at first I used to only write the things and now I put little decorations and you know, you can, you can go extreme. I still only use one color, but Hey, you could have at it. And 
get like a whole plethora of colors and really go crazy. And then you've got art right there too. So yeah, you just have to use, just use one of those whiteboard markers. You know, that's what I use. Yeah. 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 I have one that's got, it's more like the, um, the kind that you see at, um, in shops So it. It's, it's like a little bit more opaque. And I don't know, I dig it because it's just got a different feel, but- Oh, like a chalk anything, marker or something. It's like a chalk marker. It's just, as, they're called glass markers. So, but- Oh, oh whiteboard, okay, okay, nice. Yeah, whiteboard marker is what I started with, but then um, uh, I, I, I used it up and then I just came across this other one at Amazon, so. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even know they had that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, either one. It's funny, what I used to use at first was before I got the markers, I was just using my wife's lipstick. You know, it was just like, oh. <laughs> that worked too. <laughs> yeah, uh, bingo markers are cheap and they're pretty good. And they 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 clean up pretty well too. What's a bingo yeah. marker? Well, uh, it's a game in the United States that old people play. And, oh. <laughs> uh, and it's um no it's it's for reals uh you know no i know it, but it, they have special they, markers they have, they have special yeah they're more like stamps that, yeah they, they're these special markers and they're really mm. good for for big mirrors and they're really good for for writing on windows too um but that's like you can get whites and blacks and pinks all these different colors but yeah bingo markers are really good for that sort of thing yeah i almost forgot about yesterday yeah. i needed some reminders to help me remember yesterday so i wrote it down on the calendar and i wrote it down in my book i put it in my phone oh we're losing you i think you're breaking up Yvonne. Oh, oh can i say it again yeah yes please yes please yeah try again <laughs> okay well um i did everything i could to try to remember yesterday because yesterday was very important so i did try to write it down on my calendar i i asked some friends and um and, and so i uh, put it in my phone and so and i also tried to remember myself i i said monday 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 remember remember monday remember monday and it worked. I mean, I kept saying it over and over and over, and I eventually remembered it Monday. <laughs> that was good, I yeah. Said, yeah. And I did what I needed to do yesterday, and it was great. I mean, Monday. And it was I see in the chat, Matt brought up a really good point of uh, using voice to text for notes sometimes, which is a lifesaver. Like, if you, if you really can't, like, sit and type in something, and I know you can do it in Apple Notes. I don't know about Android. I would assume yes. But just being able to record is even really awesome. Kind of getting back to like capturing the notes and then whether you write it down in a traditional notebook or put it into something digital. Um, but yeah, using that voice to to text note taking is, is pretty cool and pretty essential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's so vital, you know, just to make sure that when you have ideas, especially just get it, you think you're going to maybe sometimes remember, you know, and you won't. So just, just that's the important thing is just writing things down as quickly as possible. So another thing that I do do all the time is I just send um, text messages to myself. And then I just go to my text messages and go, what was that idea? You know, someone tells me something, they mention a book, they mention this, they mention that. Let me just punch it in really quick. Not, don't ever sit there and think that you're gonna remember what someone tells you. You know, you, you won't. If they yeah. say, oh, you gotta check out this Netflix documentary. Oh, that sounds cool, I'll check it out. And all of a sudden, five hours later, you're like, oh shit, what the hell what did they want, you know? That's the story <laughs> of my life right hey, there. Hey Raul, be careful, <laughs> you're doing annotating on the, uh, Thing somehow there. Oh yeah, so what crossed the little the little old lady? <laughs> yeah, I never know how to get rid of that. Row. Uh, the annotate. Let me see if I can clear it. Uh, no, that's just on my end. It's got to be possible. Sure, clear. Hold on, clear all drawings. There we go. Uh, Julie, what's the uh, manufacturer for the glass markers that you uh, use? Um, that is a great question. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> let me check. Hang on. Sorry. Okay. Can you guys see the screen or did it go away? Uh, yeah, no, we can. We do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I apologize. I'm so sorry. Oh, no worries. No worries. I, I figured out how to get rid of it last time. I didn't know how to get rid of it. So 
Yeah. Steven, there we have some hands up, Curtis and Emily. Yeah, go want. ahead, guys. Go ahead and just unmute yourself and uh, shout out. But what? Go ahead, uh, Emily. Go ahead first, and then uh, Curtis. Um, I actually had another question for like everyone. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just because I haven't done it since college, and college was a while ago. How the heck do you prepare mentally for a critique? Um, how do you prepare mentally for critique? Uh, well, <laughs> I you just gotta have to assume the yeah, you just, just gotta have to assume the worst. You know, like <laughs> I know that sounds terrible and all, but it, it kind of is the truth. You gotta go, just be prepared for anything. You know um it's not the unexpected and whatever critique you do get like don't take it personally just take it as a sign is like okay that's my next roadmap of where i need to go if that makes sense yeah, uh, don't, don't view it like criticism say i'm receiving feedback you know i'm i'm getting a lot of valuable information and if you can kind of distance yourself from the emotions that are tied to the work you create. It's really hard as artists because we put a lot of ourselves into things. So if someone says, oh, I don't really like that, you're kind of like, well, I, you know, I, I, I love that. That's my favorite piece or whatever. But just remember, everyone's perception is going to be different. And if you go into a critique saying, okay, these people, I value their opinion. So they're going to have good information and just try to disassociate like the work of art part from I'm getting information about how to improve this or change this or not because nothing says you have to make a change depending on you know who's giving the critique and what you're trying to accomplish so know your goals what do you want to get out of the critique and right. then look at it as just be open to the information be open to the feedback it's not you personally you're looking yeah, they're yeah. looking at something else they're not criticizing you yeah just remember critiques are really just uh, opinions that's all so don't take them personal. Just uh, listen to what the people have to say. Be open to changing your idea because basically that's what you're looking for anyways when you ask for a critique. You're not really positive for sure what you've done. So you're looking for outside sources to yeah, help improve or to maybe have a new look and a new direction on something that uh, you thought maybe was as far as you could go. So critique is really just opinions. That's all they are, just opinions. And uh, if you get them from people that you respect and that you look up to, then those can be great opinions and they're good to look at and they're good to take into consideration. And it'll help you grow as an artist and as a person individually. You know, when I first met up with Steven Silver, I was looking for uh, Patrick Morgan and I met up with everybody. I met up with Patrick Morgan, Steven Silver, David Coleman, everything like that. Steven Silver told me everything I, I did wrong with my work, but I wasn't taking this so hard at all. I mean, oh, we lost you again. Oh boy. Um, yeah, you know, I think the, the most important thing, it just comes down to just making sure that you do first and foremost respect the person's work that you're even getting a critique from. You know, if all of a sudden you're getting a critique from your, your mom or your dad <laughs> who, who aren't artists or something, that, that's not going to be so effective. Um, or someone that you just don't even like their artwork at all. Again, people can always say so, even if you don't like their artwork, they might even have something interesting to say. But I think that's what you just got to, if you value what that person has to offer, yeah, just take it. Just listen to it, uh, take notes, see what, if you can um, apply it. And, um, you know, yeah, just like everyone said, it's not a personal thing. If you're not afraid to talk to the person in the first place, that would probably help. You're able to take the critique a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So anyway, I hope that helps. I will say this though. Um, we we have to really, you know, being an artist, there's a ton of rejection mm -hmm. and good artists get rejection. Like all, like I see some, like I know people are excellent artists and like you hear their early life and like what they go through. And uh, you know, one of my teachers, he was talking about his 
first job was for Mattel and he was like a, a guy that drew fantasy art, like kind of, um, you know, barbarians and robots and stuff like that. And his first gig was working for Mattel on Barbie and he was, he was getting critiqued left and right. And he said he would drive to his, he would be driving to work and he would just be so upset. He'd be vomiting at the window of his car half the time. And this is one of the best artists, you know, amazing. And you think about uh, like why, you know, it's like, like hearing Superman had a bad day, you know, it's just, you know, and, uh-huh. and you have to be tough and you have to, it, it is a, a mental fortitude. And this is where like the centering of the consciousness and the belief in oneself really comes into, you know, comes into play. And it, and, and yes, you know, uh, from people that you respect, that's a big deal too, you know, and then, and then sometimes you have to listen to people you don't respect because yeah. sometimes they hit something that yeah. nobody else is seeing. So it's a wild thing. So we, I, we have to be strong. We are warriors. And you <laughs> want to get really used to it because you're, you're, when you get an industry job, you're going to be getting rejected a lot from your directors. And that's something that I, you know, had happened my whole career where I would do drawings and my directors would just send me back to the drawing board and go, nope, that's not it. It's not working. I mean, I need you to go back and fix that or change that or add this and do that. And that's the whole industry is like that. So you got to pick up a really thick skin. And one of the best ways to pick up a really thick skin is drawing live caricatures in front of people because you hear people literally behind you telling you that sucks oh my god looks nothing like that person Mm -hmm. you know and you hear these and the rejection is so harsh but again having a thick skin is one of the best things you can qualities you can have as an artist to face all this stuff because it's coming you know again you're going to get ghosted you're going to get rejected it's you're going to be told you're doing something wrong you have to uh, build up that thick skin again don't take it personally just um just 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 do it you know just start doing it more allow yourself put yourself in that environment you know allow yourself just to uh get critiqued and beat up just a little bit there's also a fine there's also a fine lot sorry um sorry there's also a fine line between uh helpful feedback and very unhelpful feedback Mm -hmm. um if you get somebody who's like Oh, your art sucks. It's like okay, but but why? But yeah. why though? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you're not you're not telling me anything. Like so, there's there's a fine line between helpful and unhelpful feedback, and that's also something to keep in mind when someone's critiquing you. I know that we've all said like, oh, you don't take it personal, and you have to have a thick skin. And in thinking about it and listening to everyone, I, I'm trying to think back. It's been like 300 years since I was in school. And what did I do to kind of develop that? And I did this ridiculous thing. So I don't, I don't know if this is like good or not good, but it, it helps as you try to transition into not taking it personally. Tell yourself you're there critiquing someone else's stuff. You know, you, you mm-hmm. put that art down and they're giving you feedback and you don't have to take it personally because, you know, they're critiquing Stephen's work or they're critiquing McKay's work. It's, it's not your, you know, like mm-hmm. disassociate yourself from it a little bit to be able to get that feedback so that you don't have that first instinctive emotional response to the information because there are people who sometimes it's just a bad day for them and so they go they go like gangbusters on your work you know and and it's really hard in the moment to separate was that person really giving me essential feedback or were they just having a really bad day and i need to give them a little bit more grace which puts you in a position of you're trying to give grace to yourself but then also to other people and so maybe if you just kind of trick your mind and say oh well they're they're doing a critique today of some artist's work and and maybe don't say of my work you know just just let it be a critique of of art and then maybe Mm -hmm. that will help transition you into that because then it does become sort of second nature when you listen I mean sometimes you don't disagree and sometimes you're like oh that's really hard and and I've often found the comments from people I know and I'm admire and really look up to uh it's always easier to take when they're like oh no no don't you you know you, let's look at doing this or let's look at doing that one they tend to deliver information to look differently but it's also a little bit easier when i when i feel some kind of um uh you, you know you feel like you you really value the opinion but if they're people that maybe are in the industry and you respect but you don't really know them yet 
you might not have that little edge. So thinking of it as just critiquing art and look at it. And even as they're making points, what would you point out? What would you say is wrong? Like if you, if you can say to yourself, okay, I'm just looking at this person's art. It's like when we flip our stuff, you know, when we reverse it to look for the flaws, you draw something and then you flip it and you're like, oh my God, this is terrible. Well, just think of it the same sort of way. You're just going to look at your own work from the other side, not having it attached to being you. So it won't feel, you know, you'll be more receptive to what they have to say. Yeah, good stuff. Okay. I think also with directors, because in a way, uh, when you're working with mentors or teachers or directors, they have the final say and sometimes you don't, maybe don't agree deep down with what they say, but in a way you want, you have to please the client, right? Or the director. But oh, one one thing, so oh, true. One, one thing that I thought is uh, that everybody has this, I call it pressure points, but it's not really pressure points, it's kind of what, what they focus on. So if you're working with someone for a longer project and you're getting feedback, kind of figure out what it is that they actually care about in the project the most. Um, so for instance, you know, for instance, someone like Steven might give you a lot of things, like he always uh, talks about the, the ladder, the variety, and that would be something that you know, you'd be like, okay, Stephen will point this out, for instance. Sorry to put you yeah, as yeah, an yeah, example, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, but yeah. then in animation, I have these people who only cared about appeal and how interesting it was. And the things about it, if it, the mechanics weren't right, that was secondary for them. But then, then the other people, they're more sticklers for mechanics and that's what pleases them. And that would, would get the project approved more if you focus on that for that specific person and every person might have kind of like that different thing that it's key for them so when you're working with a client I think to kind of protect yourself from kind of constant feedback try to understand what makes them I guess tick in a way you know then it might be easier to actually move forward with 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 the critique I suppose Emily I gotta ask who's critiquing you Who, who's the <laughs> critique who's, who's it gonna be it's gonna be you, Steve. Oh, me! Oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're in the uh, eight-week course. Oh, you're in good hands. You're in good hands. Uh, I, I oh, just, I just God. had a mentorship with Stop Steven yesterday, and he's a real hard ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, embrace yourself. No, I'm, ki I'm kidding. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're, you're gonna be in fine. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, wink. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey. Emily, building on what Kinga said, not only should you think about what do what do your clients want, but um, what do you want out of the critique? Would it what would a successful critique look like? Would it just be Steven saying, "Oh my gosh, your stuff is awesome," or are you going to be like, "Wait a second, what what am, why did I bother?" Right? You so think about in your head, what would make this successful for me? Like what kind of feedback is important to me? Because then that will help you with questions too. If I've done a number of mentorship meetings with Steven and, and they're just money well spent. They're the best thing because you walk away from it with so much good information and actionable items. And so think to yourself, what is it? So if, if he says, oh, you know, look for the line of action, then you can really say, wait a second, I need more information than that. Or, okay, do you think it's X, Y, or Z? And, and so what would make the critique successful in your mind at the end of it? What kind of information do you really want? And that's going to help you participate in it. Yeah. I can vouch. But Steven's really, he's very nice. He's not, he's not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not, a, it's not all like those critiques where you're oh, like, yeah, yeah vomiting out the car window whoever said that yeah, yeah. You, will, you will have no vomiting don't worry no vomiting, no vomiting out the car window. yeah that's like one of the like one of my teachers like that's mark mcdonald's story and i was like he's like oh yeah it's the worst he's like i'd be driving to work it'd be traffic jams and i'd just be so upset i'd be vomiting out the car window and i'm like this guy's like a this guy's really good you know <laughs> yeah so it's like that's like hearing frank frazetta yeah i got the grief diarrhea from the bad you know it's just you know anyway but you know, some uh, people have more thick skin than other people do, and it's, it's just the way it is. It's not always a bad thing. It's just another obstacle to like learning their own pace than others. 
<clears throat> my approach is very simple. It's just like encouragement. You know, I want to encourage you. I, you know, I'm going to point out what you need to work on, you know, but I don't want you to walk away feeling defeated like you're, you're yeah. lost cause. I want you just to know that, you know, this is good. You're heading in the right direction, but, you know, I like to throw the butts in there, you know, yeah. it gets into that. And, uh, but it, it's, 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 again, and some people I know are really harsh. I've seen it where people are so brutal and telling people that they just don't even bother just getting into uh, animation. Like I, I had a mentorship yesterday um, with a girl who just, you know, her parents weren't supportive necessarily of her, right? And it's, but it's just very important just to, um, you know, if you're not working for Disney, then you're not successful. And it's that sort of mm. thing where it's like, you know, success isn't about just working for uh, a big giant conglomerate company. You know, it's like doing things oh. for yourself. And, and there's so many six and she was great at really beautiful illustrations for um, a children's book. And I just really encouraged her to pursue that. Like, don't sometimes, you know, the things you really want aren't like I talked about in your DNA necessarily. It's not meant to be that route. There's other routes. There's other ways to get yeah. to success that you want to get to um, and just you got to believe in that and trust in that. It's yeah. so true. And everyone thinks that, you know, Disney is the end all be all. And that's like the that's the that's the Emerald City for us on the on the on the Yellow yeah. Book Road. And it's like, you know, and, and we're all pining about d getting there. And it's not what we even, you know, like with all the things we want to do that we, we put so much energy into. By the time you get there, you're not even the same person. It doesn't even fit. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's, I, I wanted to go to CalArts, uh, you know, really badly. And it did, and I'm really glad I didn't. Uh, I found yeah. something else. And, Amen. Um, yeah. One thing I've learned. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I just said, imagine the debt, because. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. CalArts. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm from Europe. Like, I went to university for free. <laughs> and right. So I can't Lucky. imagine having, like, to pay for fifty thousand dollars a year yeah, for four years yeah, yeah. i mean it's a, the dream school but i i mean i can't imagine it now to have a, any debt like that it but well, in america guys, yeah spend <laughs> money you don't have and maybe it's a good thing i didn't go to calors because i wanted to go so bad i, I tell got you, two well, the few friends of mine who did go will tell you high debt they'll make <laughs> it off at 50. I don't even remember how much of it. Oh yeah, Matt, you told me about that. It was really like, oh Oh dear. Yeah, your 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 thing's real bad today, uh, Yvonne. Your uh your microphone, not it's very blocky. It's not coming through really. Oh, I don't know what to do about that. My microphone is back here. Oh. So but one thing I did want to just say is that one, one of the biggest things I've, I've definitely learned in this life is that we've always, a lot of us always have that mentality that the grass is always greener on the other side, right? If, if I get this job, then I've made it and I've accomplished. If this happens for me, then that's the final end or be all. But you realize every time, every situation, you realize it's not, it's just not so. There's, you're always going to find eventually something better. It's always going to be chasing something. You're going to find some comfort in some area, but it just doesn't, it's not real. Um, so again, if you can like wrap that in your head and just go, you know, don't think just by getting this specific thing in my life that that's it. I've, 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 co I've conquered it. I've, I've met that quest. Um, it just, it just yeah. constantly changes. It always evolves. And that's one thing that I've learned to hold true, you know, oh my God, if I get hired at Disney, which I did that, oh, at Warner Brothers, if I get a job at Warner Brothers, man, this is, and I get my job at Warner Brothers and later you realize, hmm, it's not so, uh, what, what, it, what it all was cracked up to be necessarily. And I remember distinctly one of these artists and I was just like, oh man, I'm so excited. She really like crushed me in a way. She's just like, I'm saying, I'm, this, this is the end all. She's all, you know, Steven, you know, she'd been in the industry a long time. It's really, uh, you'll learn, you'll learn. It's not really all it's cracked up to be, you know? Yeah. And then, oh, okay, and then, oh yeah, okay, that was true. If I get my job at Disney, then, oh, okay, okay, get my job at Disney. Yeah, 
yeah, it's fun, but I still want to do more. It's not all that it's cracked up to be. You know, there's always going to be something. So just keep that in mind. And now That's you're really giving cool. out that advice. That's awesome. You've yes. come full circle, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I felt one time in one summer when I finally got a bunch of like, uh, people asking me to do commissions for them i'm like wow this is great but then after a while i'm just like you know i'm not really feeling it there's got to be something else yeah you know? yeah it happens so it's yeah. like no one you know I applied for commons i'm very excited for where that's gonna go yeah you know i've been in this industry for over 45 years now and i remember steve when i first met him uh, a young kid doing caricatures at a sea world, I think it was. Yeah. Back in San Antonio. Or Man, in San Diego, yeah. Talk about positive ambition. I saw it so strongly in Steve. I mean, this was a kid who, who had a plan and a dream and a desire and, and the willpower to continue focusing on what he wanted and to work for. And that was just very, very inspiring. And then to make things worse, a little, he could draw. I mean, <laughs> really draw. And, and it was just, it was great. You know, and here he is, a young kid. He's already given us lectures at the, at the, uh, at the convention that we were at. And we're, I'm sitting here doing characters. I still have the sketch, as a matter of fact, with uh, me and I can't remember the other artist from uh, from Canada. He looks like Wolverine. We're sitting, we're sitting next to each other. We're just listening, in and we're awestruck with Steve and his attitude. His attitude was the key to the success that he has reached, yeah. and and that was something that I, I was always very impressed with, and, and I kept that with me. I had the same desires and the attitude that Steve has, but I went in a different direction than he did. He was really more focused in animation and cartooning at the time, where I was more focused on wanting to do caricaturing and live drawing at the time, which got me around the world like it did. But Steve's attitude was just on top of it. And and we remember him, I remember him fondly on all of that. And I've always followed his career and, and seeing how he's doing. And you're right, he has come full circle, but he's not done yet. Trust no. me, I, yeah, <laughs> something's going to fall in his lap and he's just going to blow everybody out of the water again. And it's just going to be more like, he's got to die. He's too good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Steve, you you've been a great inspiration. I mean, Thanks, you know, yeah, a lot older than you have been doing it longer, already. but <laughs> man, you are a great inspiration. You really Thanks. are. I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long time. We've known each other a long time. Long time, Steve. Long time. Yeah. yeah. Man, I want to get into cartooning so badly, but like you said yesterday, shoot for caricature. That's where I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Yeah, good. Good. Work on that so, likeness more. <clears throat> well, so any advice crazy. I can give you in a character, and please don't hesitate to call me. I'm, you know, I've, okay. I've done pretty much everything. I'm the official cartoonist for the state of Texas as a caricature artist, and that opened a lot of opportunities for me. I've, oh, I've yeah? Done, yeah, you name it. I've pretty much done it as a caricature artist. So anything I can do to help you, please don't hesitate to call me. Oh, absolutely. Um, my, you have an email or? Yeah, I'll go ahead and post that for you. You post that in the comments so I can... Get your phone. I don't know if you like share your phone number in the comments or anything like that. That's why I asked. <laughs> I think Curtis has a question. I see there's a little hand up there. Yeah, if anyone has a question, just go ahead and um, just go ahead and just open up and uh, speak. Yeah. Um, honestly, I forgot that I had my hand raised um, because of how uh, how um, immersive the conversation was. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, a lot of the, like I, I, the stuff about the education stuff, especially. I actually decided to study in this course instead of going to college because of how detailed this course is. It's been great so far. I'm oh, almost, nice. I'm getting close to finishing session two. Um, I do have a quick question. It does. It's not really about lessons or anything. Um, I have a question. Have you uh, looked at the character designs to the new Adult Swim series, Unicorn? Um, I have not. Oh, yeah, I have not seen that. No. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful work. It, it's beautiful. It's like a mixture of Asama Tezuka and um, the Popeye, the Pop, the Fleischer's Popeye, 
it's wild. It's, it's oh, I've it's, seen it. It has a rubber yeah, it's really it's good. Style. Yeah, because I know a while ago. I draw ago, a lot of inspiration from Tezuka. No. Like, I try to copy his line art, basically. Wait, just a second. I just want to hear because Curtis was still um, just speaking there. I just want to uh, what, what were you were saying about that, Curtis. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I remember like I, I don't know if it was like a month or two ago. I heard you mention about what like the the show Royal Crackers that you weren't really that. Big oh yeah, that yeah, stuff. yeah, right, right, right. And um, and uh, like a few weeks later, Unicorn premiered. I think it was supposed to be on Cartoon Network, but they said they aired on Adult Swim instead. Um, it's on Max too. It's on Max too. That's where I'm watching it. But like the the yeah, but the designs like it's very Tezuka y fleshery. I even noticed like with uh Melinda in like the very beginning, it kind of looked like um I forgot the character's name from Kim Possible, the one with the white skin and black hair kind of looked like her. Kinda oh, like uh, Betty Boop. Uh oh, you talking about Draken the, with the blue skin? Or oh with no oh no, she go? She go. Sorry. Yeah, she, yeah, because yeah, like at the very beginning, like like for pretty much the whole show, she looks like Baby Boop because of like a re- reincarnation thing. But like oh, okay. at the beginning of the show, she looks like uh, like one of your designs from oh, like Impossible. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't seen that. So that's on Adult Swim. Yeah, it's on Adult Swim. It's on Max as well. On Thursday. Oh, on Max as well. Okay, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, I got, I got Max. It's created by Gindy. Oh, okay. Oh, nice, nice. I yeah, okay. No, I haven't seen that any of that yet. That's cool. It's and deeply these. spiritual. Oh it's yeah. Beautiful. Oh yeah. It's all about reincarnation and like really. Yeah, it's it's and and it, it's wild. It mixes so apparently he had been working on this for years and years. And he said he, he was glad he didn't get a chance to work on it till later because his his children were his big inspiration. He saw how children change so much in such a short period of time. And and this was like the big inspiration for him. So it made it it enriched it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna check that Gendy out. Gendy does sure. great work. My favorite yeah. cartoon is Samurai Jack. Oh yeah, yeah. He's creating. New, he's creating oh, an R-rated yeah. movie. I know you guys heard about it. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Cartoon is He Man. He Man. <laughs> well, what's the what's the movie uh, Gendy did? What, what? Hotel Transylvania. Oh, oh, that's the one. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah he's currently oh, yeah. making. Um, he's currently doing a. Like uh, Sony's animation's first 2D film, like an adult animated film called Fix. Idris Elba is going to be in it. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> nice. nice. It's about a dog. It's like, how does he spend his last days before he gets fixed? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix, fix. That's it. I, I did see, I saw something um, on that. It came on, it, it, they posted that yesterday. It was a big thing. Oh, okay. Nice. Check that out. A lot of things to check out. All right. We're just almost done here. Just kind of like finish up whatever sketch you're kind of just working on. And then we'll. Turned into a little artist anonymous session. Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Didn't expect that. It's fun. It's always fun. You never see where it goes, you know. It's it's been so good. I wanted to share with you guys before I before we're done. These are really big. I think about them all the time. And uh, it's go within or go without. And the other one is, is the grass is always greener. Water <laughs> your own grass. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. All right. Let me just see. Let me back out here. See what I even did today here. Where's all my. Yeah, so hopefully you guys had fun with that session, with this session. Again, the idea is just to, again, just invent, you know, because we want to, when we're drawing, the thing that we really want to do is use uh, photo reference. We want to draw from life and we want to draw from our imagination. So those are the elements that you really just kind of want to focus on. And if you can just mix all those together, uh, you'll just start to come out with some, you know, better results uh, that, that you want. All right. Um, all right, cool. I'm just going to stop the screen share there. Thank you all once again for showing up, participating. It's always a, a good time. And uh, other than that, what's, what do we got going on here is uh, just, yeah, just next week is yeah, just another drawing hangout. Um, the, the Saturday one is the following uh, 24th, if you're able to join in the Saturday hangout. But uh, other than that, 
I shall see you guys next Wednesday. All right. Stay dedicated. Stay strong. And most importantly, have fun. And I'll see you guys Thank later. You. All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye. 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 Bye.